So I publish DIYMarketers.com. I started in 2008, but it originally was supposed to be a membership site and I sort of just didn't do that. I just started creating content and writing and just putting things up there and it just got picked up and grew from there. The biggest challenge and continues to be the challenge is that when I started the site, DIYMarketers.com in 2008, a lot of small business owners didn't know that there were low cost marketing tools out there to help them do the kinds of marketing they want to do, whether it was using Moo.com for business cards or Aweber for your email marketing. I mean, there are a lot of low cost marketing tools. They didn't know about those. So that was the original premise that I was going to teach them about those tools. Well, as you would imagine, now these tools are all over the place. And the problem is that now they don't know which tool to choose. They don't know which strategy to choose. So when I started the site, online marketing and those kinds of things were really new to a lot of small business owners. Now it's not only new, it's overwhelming. So now the shift has been to help them choose. So architecture is a challenge. Structure is a challenge. Choosing the right content is a challenge. That's a big reason why I'm here. I have only been using Ezoic for, I think, three or four months. I've known about Ezoic for well over a year. It was referred to me by Anita Campbell from Small Business Trends. That's a much, much, much bigger site. So the first challenge I had to get on Ezoic was to make sure that my traffic was up. And this is what identified all my problems, which is the site was dirty. I call it digital dust bunnies bad content, old content, links that didn't work. There were many, many things I needed to change and update so that I could reach the traffic threshold for Ezoic. Once I reached that traffic threshold for Ezoic, there's more work to be done. And I'm really, really excited about it. We're just in the beginning, but I've already started to see results. Can I just tell you, it is all about the people. I have had, since I've been on Ezoic, I had a couple issues with like the back end of my site and whatever. I, it took me three or four weeks to figure out what the problem was. I called Ezoic in like two hours it was fixed. So just having the human, human connection, I've done Google AdSense. I still have issues with Google AdSense. I can't reach anybody, I can't talk to anybody, and that's the thing I love most about Ezoic. I suppose I could talk about the platform, but I think folks already know about that, artificial intelligence, all this optimizing, but it's the people that make the difference. Well, once I got on Ezoic, I heard about Puptelligence. I saw that, uh, you know, you only accepted so many people, so I quick signed up. Um, I came to Puptelligence really to help me optimize my site and make sure that I'm getting that um, I'm creating a great user experience. That's really, really, that's probably the most important thing to me. And of course, to generate revenue. I wish I had done it sooner. My number one topic that I'm interested in is the architecture topic. This, as I mentioned, is really, really important to me. I'm in the throes of making massive changes but little by little, and architecture is critical. Um, the second presentation that I happen to have seen already because I'm friends with Anita Campbell, but I'm telling you that is an outstanding presentation because it shows you um, how a real life site actually use the information, use the data and optimize. And I'm actually even looking forward to uh, the day after where the publishers are going to be talking because I figured if Anita's Example was so useful, I can't wait to see what everybody else has to say. My highest priority is to drive traffic, increase user engagement. That's really, really important because aside from ad revenue, the way uh, DIY marketers makes money is through sponsored content with big brands. And one of the things that big brands want to do with as a micro influencer is they want to engage with small business owners. So if uh, I can create content that creates a great user experience and has them coming back for more, the sponsors will be happy, my ad revenue will be happy. It's a win-win situation.
what, I'm so glad you brought up SEO. I'm not an ex SEO expert by any stretch. Uh, and I don't know if other folks have mentioned this, but one of my favorite resources for SEO information is Backlinko, Brian Dean. He's outstanding and his, I mean, I just love his content. It's super useful. And every time you hear it, you're like, oh, I can do that. So that's one. Another one for content marketing, one of my favorite folks and truly the best presenter at Content Marketing World, Andy Crestadina. He actually runs a company called Orbit Media, but you've got to check out the blog post. You've got to see him speak outstanding. I'd be remiss if I didn't say small biz trends because our audience of small business owners, they read Inc., Forbes, Entrepreneur. But when it comes to digging deeper, you have to go to small biz trends. They're, they make it much more actionable. I think in a, a topic that's, how do I say this? I'm convinced that it's about site structure and architecture, because you can write great content all day long, and believe me, I have, but if you don't have the right structure, it's gonna get buried, it's not gonna get found. You can't just count on organic SEO. You know, uh, well, as a publisher that also is uh, mentioned and published in different places, uh, aside from a couple articles, my homepage is the page that gets the most traffic so I have to have that great user experience from the time that you land on the start and I think people underestimate that and it's not as easy as people think especially when you're trying to combine um, the Ezoic data about you know what content people like and respond to and the content that you want to feature on your site and what you know what makes the most money versus what gives the best user experience it's a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I think I would like to encourage more people to get into publishing. Um, I think the web is rife with all kinds of, as I mentioned, large publications, but I really do see a gap in many industries in what I would call third-party independent publications on a specific topic. Just to give you an example, I mentioned our audience reads Inc., Entrepreneur Forbes, right? Then they'll go to Small Biz Trends. Do you know that there is no third-party independent marketing publication? People that used to do that, the industry changes. I guess that's my lesson. When I started, there were three or four or five, but now some of the best marketing content is on platforms. So like HubSpot or WordStream. Well, they want you to use their platform. So there's no third party space and that's the space I fill. And I can't imagine that that isn't the case in every industry.